is Rachel Rosenthal, and I teach throughout the year in the summers in the artist Bimi Drash here at Trisha. This week's Parsha is Parsha Vayetze, which picks up in the middle of the story of Yaakov. Yaakov was at a turning point in his life. At the end of the previous week's Parsha, he had stolen the blessing from his brother by tricking his father, and now is fleeing for his life to find himself a wife according to his mother's request. Surely at this moment, Yaakov is filled with fear. He is leaving his homeland, his family, and everything he has ever known, and he has no way of knowing if or when he'll return to it. It is against this backdrop at the beginning of the Parsha that Yaakov lies down on the side of the road and falls asleep, and against this, where he sees the angels going up and down the ladder to heaven, the famous vision of Jacob's ladder. This is the moment when Yaakov receives his first nebuah, his first prophecy. God promises him that God will stay with him while he leaves the land, and will return him back home safely. While this scene is striking, perhaps Yaakov's reaction is more noteworthy. It says in the beginning of Parakavchat, And Yaakov awoke out of his sleep and said, Could it be that Hashem was in this place and I did not know? He was afraid, and he said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God and the gate of heaven. There's something I've always found strange about the way that this narrative unfolds. Yaakov comes from a family of prophets. Both his father and his grandfather, and even his mother and his grandmother, have spoken to God. And so the emphasis that his father's bracha put on his own destiny going forward should give Yaakov a sign that he too will become a prophet. Surely he has been taught that God is all around him, even if God has not yet taken the moment to speak to him directly. And it seems that this should be especially true at this moment, while he is still in Eretz Canaan, the land that God has designated and been promised to him, and which Chazal tells us which makes people wise and especially open to God's presence. So then why did Yaakov say, Achen yesh Hashem b'makom hazeh? Could it be that Hashem is in this place? How could it be that Yaakov, one of our great Avot, is not attuned to God's presence at any moment? There are two different ways to consider this question. The first, cited by Rashi, comes from Midrash Agadah. Yaakov is afraid that God will be angry at him for sleeping in a place so holy that he can experience prophecy. According to this reading, it is the place, more than Yaakov itself, that must be treated with a level of respect, even without signs of Kedushah. Yaakov, then, is afraid that his sleeping there will be seen as a sign of disrespect, and he fears God's wrath. By crying out that, God, that he did not know that God was there, Yaakov is trying to protect himself from what he sees as a second, even more dangerous threat to his life than the one recently put out by his brother. However, Sforno, while playing off of this theme, frames it slightly differently. For Sforno, Yaakov's reaction to the prophecy is not about the space himself, itself, but rather Yaakov's relationship to that space. Yaakov is surprised that he's able to receive Nebuah at this moment, even as it becomes clear to him that this place is ripe for prophecy. Not only can prophecy not happen anywhere, but it also cannot happen to anyone. Yaakov then, his surprise is not about the place, but it is more about himself, as he does not see himself prepared to become a prophet. It is not surprising that Yaakov would not experience Nebuah, not expect to experience Nebuah at this moment. He is at the lowest point of his life, alienated from his father and brother, separated from his mother, and descending from the holiness of Eretz Kanaan as he travels to Haran. At this moment, he is literally in the lowest place, lying on the ground, with nothing but the ground itself to serve as his pillow. But for some reason, this is the moment that God comes to him for the first time. Perhaps, then, this is what Yaakov means when he says, Ma nora hamakom hazeh. This place is frightening, but also extraordinary, because it offers the promise of connection with and protection from God, even as he feels all alone. Even when he is at his lowest point, and God is all the way up in the heavens, he has found Shar Shamayim, the gate up to the heavens, that will allow him to enter into that relationship with God. And this notion, in fact, is echoed throughout the Jewish tradition, for one example, we, cite the verse, we recite the verse from Tehillim Kaf Yod 118 during Halal. Min anani from the narrow place I called out to God, God answered me from his heights. Here again, we have this juxtaposition of high and low, of the moments when we feel all alone, where God's presence comes forward to us. 
God's promise exists when things are good, but even also when things are difficult. So in certain ways, then, we can see Jacob's vision of heaven as a vision of a world that can look different from the one that he knows, and perhaps different from the one that we know as well. The feeling of awe, of ma no ra ha ma kom hazeh, how awesome is this place, is one that we, like Yaakov, must learn to try to carry with us. Just as Yaakov uses his vision to rebuild his life and ultimately lay a foundation to create what becomes B'nai Israel, may, we experience, may our experience of awe allow us to envision a world that is more just and godly. Shabbat Shalom.